is fantastic. <laughs> Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to a very quick first impressions review. Today I'm at SMMT, which is one of these wonderful days I get to experience working in this industry where a bunch of manufacturers and influencers and journalists all come down to one location here at Milbert Proving Ground and get to sample some of the latest and greatest automotive products. And today I'm in supposedly one of those cars. It's a BMW. It's been quite a long time since I've had some seat time in a BMW. This brand new 2024 i5 Touring. And the plan for this video is to just get a very, very quick initial impression of what this car is like. Now, for me, this is the first time experiencing the most recent of the BMW lineup. I've never seen this interior or driven a car with this interior. And I have to say, first impressions are very good. It feels, the only word I can really think of is luxurious. From watching other video reviews of these latest BMWs, I always assume that this central display that goes all the way from the driver's side across to the middle of the car would be somewhat oppressive and intrusive, but actually, on first impressions, it doesn't feel like that at all. And we're going over some pretty rough bumps here as part of the test course, and actually, it's not upsetting the car at all. It sort of just glides over them, which is quite impressive. Now, this is the 40i, which is not the most powerful of the range, but it still should pack a punch. So we're at 35 miles an hour now, a little bit of a squirt uphill. Let's pop my foot down. Yeah, and you're met with uh, an interesting sound composed, I believe, by Hans Zimmer for BMW exclusively. And you're also greeted by the very instantaneous power delivery that is so synonymous with these electric cars. Handling feels quite dynamic as well. It doesn't feel like a big, long estate car because that's what this is. And actually, I have to say I'm quite impressed on looking at the back, both the boot and the rear seats. There does seem to be an awful lot of space. There's a great amount of space in the boot and actually it's quite a low loading base. So it'd be easy to place heavy items in there. And then in the back seats, there's plenty of leg room, good headroom too, and a USB-C charger plug on the back of the seat, which reminds me of one of those airplane seats. You can feel a lot of technology working in the background, which is not an unfamiliar sensation with anything that's new, but especially in electric cars, you definitely get a sense of that. There's some really impressive undulations and depressions on this circuit. And if anyone thinks it looks a little bit familiar, well, it's featured in quite a lot of films, most famously perhaps in Casino Royale, where he has a big accident in an Aston Martin DBS that I've just driven past. The other thing I can't seem to escape with this car on initial impressions, which to me is quite remarkable, is, well, you know that saying that the silence is deafening? That is exactly how I feel with this. I almost feel like my ears are ringing because this car is so unbelievably quiet. I guess what I'm seeing and what I'm doing with the drive of this car doesn't particularly correlate to the sensation that I get in my ears. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it's very, very composed, very, very refined, very, very silent in this car. So while I've just stopped very quickly, let's have a little play around. So uh, electric steering wheel, which is really, really nice to have. I'm always a big fan of that. And yes, I do really enjoy these screens. I didn't think I would. Now, I know that a lot of the functionality has now moved into here. I always liked the buttons and the switch gear in these BMWs. And I have to admit, I'm not particularly a fan of this new system. These things that you do have to touch, they're not actually buttons. I mean, this whole panel clicks in, but sort of been said to death but it does feel a little bit cheap and tacky is kind of the word i described likewise with the crystal effect round knob and also the gear selector in this crystally effect i'm not a real fan of that i don't think it really upsells the car too much two good cup holders here and some great storage always fantastic storage solutions in bmws proper size uh, cup holders area there and a good handy little bit in the door card i do like however the trim in here, the leather and the soft touch plastics are gorgeous. The wheel feels fantastic. And this carbon effect trim is lovely. It's sort of carbon fiber with a clear layer over the top. Looks the part, feels the part. And I do quite enjoy the blue accents around, which I believe will change if we go into different driving modes. 
And so let me go into my modes and we'll choose sport. And yes, you can see the crystal effect going to red. Everything changes a little bit. So let's just drive the car with that in sport. We'll do that same route once again. I do have a lovely heads up display in front of me, which I quite enjoy. And immediately the regen braking in sport mode is uh, aggressive actually. It's quite uh, a lot different to the mode we are in before, which I believe to just be efficiency. So sport mode, give it a little bit of... The main noticeable difference is the sound. I believe Hans Zimmer composed a bunch of sounds for these later BMWs and I think you can configure them, but also between modes they will change. Let's go into expressive. Oh, I like expressive. Oh, that's very tuneful. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I think I'll just drive in expressive mode just for the noise. I wonder if I can have expressive sound in sport. Okay, let's, I really want to put my foot down so I can hear this expressive mode. I really like this. Listen, this is great. Okay, here we go. We've got up to 55 miles an hour here. That is fantastic. That reminds me of what's the... Oh, the film studio that has the duh, at the end of its intro. It sounds exactly like that. Okay, let's stop messing around with the sound. Let's put it into sport and just see what it's like if we push it a little bit harder. So, power feels the same. I have got this boost toggle, which starts a timer of 10 seconds. I'm just gonna go to this lane. Although it's very compliant, I don't feel like I'm ever going to run out of grip. It does roll a little bit more than I thought. Yes, it's a massive, big estate car, but you would think it'd be a little bit more planted with the modern day suspension and roll bars and technology they have, but no, it doesn't seem to be that way. <laughs> it's quite impressive. I mean, I will never get bored of the way that cars these days you can access so much power so easily. I mean, anyone could drive this car and you would leave most things behind at the traffic lights driving this. But also, this is a huge, heavy car and to be able to barrel down the road like that is just, it's quite uncanny, really. I'm gonna pull boost mode again and we're gonna go up that hill. I can see my timer on the heads up display. Yeah, and that's 60 miles an hour, just like that. It is very impressive, but I guess the main issue with that is that this is an electric vehicle, right? So the heavy nature and the fact that it's fast means two things. One, it's probably not gonna be particularly efficient, not as efficient as a lighter electric car. And two, it's presumably gonna have a very, very big battery pack, which means it will take a while to charge. Now I know the charging infrastructure is improving. There are faster speeds available, but 99% of people that have these cars might have a home charger installed and the majority of them are seven kilowatts. So if this is an 80 or 90 or maybe a 100 kilowatt hour battery, then it's gonna take 13 or 14 hours to charge potentially. As is the way with these days, I've gotta go and give the car back now, probably have my 15 minutes or so. Uh, it's been an enjoyable drive. I thought that it would be completely lackluster and numb in feel, but I, well, you saw the smile on my face when I engaged efficiency mode. In fact, let's do that again, efficient. No, it wasn't efficient, was it? It was expressive. Give me the expressive. Oh, listen to it. It's so joyful. You know what? If I bowed out of bed like I did this morning, absolutely shattered, just wanted to stay in bed, then I'd put this on. And... <laughs> that is honestly the most joyous sound I think I've ever heard. That is just wonderful. Although when you're just idling like that, kind of sounds like someone behind me is getting real bad road rage and holding their horn. Listen, doesn't that, it sounds like a distant beep. No, but okay, so i5 Touring then, the 40E. Great, really lovely to drive. Uh, feels far more engaging and exciting than I had expected. As electric cars go, I'm quite impressed with the driving characteristics and personality behind the car. Um, I think it's a, a gorgeous car, actually, I wanted to say that. Though I'm never gonna claim to be a massive fan of the fake grills and things like that you get on EVs, uh, I do think this is a, a very good looking car. The latest five series and in this touring format is 
really lovely to look at. It's a, a magnificent thing to behold. I've not had a chance to really play around with any of these screens or any of the toys. However, from my very quick time in the car, I can feel that it's extremely responsive, this system actually. And I, most of them, they're, they're not very responsive to your touch. And so they're really finicky and fiddly to use. This feels like actually I'm not gonna lose too much time looking at the road, trying to get what I want because it is very responsive, very high resolution. It looks great too, it's not intrusive. I'm a big, big fan. Um, I would love to spend a bit more time with one of these cars because obviously 20 minutes is nowhere near enough to give you some proper impressions. But initial impressions are really good actually. I, I, I can't lie, it's, it's a lovely thing to drive. Okay, uh, let's hand the car back to BMW now. Don't know what I'm driving next, but I'm sure you'll see on the channel soon. Um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you found it enjoyable coming along on this uh, very quick test drive with me. I'll see you all very soon.